Welcome to the Builders Podcast, episode 98, The Price Whisperer, on how to increase and defend prices, doing pricing research, and more. Before we jump into this episode, please subscribe to this podcast, hit that notification bell if you're on YouTube, and after a listen, please give us a thumbs up, like, and share, if we've earned it. With your help, we can reach more people and deliver these valuable from the trenches lessons to those that need it. Enjoy the episode. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another The Builders. Today, we are joined by Per, the Price Whisperer. <laughs> welcome to the show. <laughs> hey, Matt. Uh, pleasure to be on the show, and, and I'm looking forward to this conversation. I hope it's going to be... Um valuable for the audience and um and maybe some entertaining too yeah hopefully so hopefully so yeah it's, it's a great topic it's something that's important to all of us if we're running businesses yeah, uh, especially with my so. my agency as as time as goes on you know uh pricing has made or break break us right i mean i probably wouldn't be here if i went to price things in a certain way i did over the years <laughs> so oh. <laughs> um so so it's a good topic um but like we like to do on the builders we'd like to start with your story mm -hmm. uh, to get to know you a little bit and uh kind of see how that entrepreneurial journey what that looked like and what kind of influenced you to go into business and eventually how you landed on becoming the price whisperer why pricing became your thing yeah why pricing um well the story here is that first of all um i got the, my moniker that the price whisperer that I, I i adopted because my name is so weird you know <laughs> nobody can spell it nobody can uh, it makes perfect sense in my in my native sweden but not so much here in the states but um and and the best way to find me if you're looking for me uh, or find my new book or find my company is just to google the price whisper and um but the story here is that i i i, I didn't want to go into business right um i uh, you know i have an undergrad in electronics and an mea um and um, i was working for this tech company and 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 my boss wanted uh, me to 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 go into sales, right? And um, and I I um, resisted that for quite a while uh, until eventually he convinced me that um, we would set up a company in Switzerland and um, um, and develop a European wide business and and he would fund the whole thing, you know, uh, which we eventually did, and and that was. He talked about the entrepreneurial journey. You know, I, I was scared shitless, right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, I've never built a company before. I've never been a CEO before. Um, I, I, uh, I, 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 I never um, developed a an international business, and I didn't speak the language. I mean, they're German. They speak German in Zurich, and I don't speak German. So, yeah. um um, but you know, it, it took us a couple of years and, and eventually we're, we were a multi-million dollar company, you know, nice. and, um, and, um, but I eventually was bought over by my, uh, main competitor, which was a, um, Japanese company. And I ended up, uh, running their European subsidiary out of, uh, out of the UK. And, uh, over a, uh, over a three year period, I quadrupled, uh, revenues in the, in that company. And then I came here to the States, um, and, um, and, uh, to join a, um, um, really to join a, a public, uh, fairly large public company, I set up a new division for the company and, and, uh, and develop that. What, what and, year was, that, what, year, what year was that? That was 97, we... no, sorry, 94. 94. Okay. So uh, a long time ago. Um, and, and I built that up to, uh, it took me about two years to get it up to a, a run rate of, of about $72 million. And, mm -hmm. um, and then I had another, um, four CEO positions here. And, 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 um, in, in all of these, um, instances, we, we did experiments with pricing only because I was, I was interested in, uh, you know, I, I, I sort of had <laughs> that I kept with me. I had a, a little, um, a little um, uh, formula for how sales volume and, and pricing were related, you know, and, and I kept that with me. Um, 
and now I know it was it's completely wrong. <laughs> but uh, but we it, 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 it so we did experiments with pricing, and some of those experiments were very successful. Uh, like next quarter revenues are up twenty five percent or so, and and others were complete duds. Yeah. And um, what I had learned in business school was so academic and, and theoretical that it didn't help us at all to understand why some of those experiments worked and others didn't. So uh, 15 years ago, um, I decided I was too old and too opinionated to be a hired gun. So I um, um, I, I set up my own shop and, and de decided to take that interest in pricing and develop a, a, a process that makes every pricing experiment a success. So, and that process is all based on, on, um, on what I thought that I would have needed in these various companies. Um, not, it takes, takes nothing from, from, from business school teachings and, and books and so that I, that I've read about pricing. It's mm -hmm. totally unique. So. Oh, that's quite a that's journey. That's my story. Yeah. So, uh, you're, you're in LA now, right? Yeah, I mean, LA, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, we were talking about coyotes before this. <laughs> yes. Somebody was a coyote was trying to take a child away. Yeah, that's uh, right. luckily, luckily they didn't uh, get a chance. Nope, they didn't. But, um, so, so that so you were CEOs over these years. So obviously, somewhere along the line, you you decided, well, I'm actually pretty good at this business thing. <laughs> did you have, <laughs> did you have uh, good mentors along the way, you know, who, who really, in, you know, inspired you or, or did you just learn as you just experimenting I just as you're talking I, about? <laughs> I just learned as I, 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 I yeah. go, you know, I, um, I did, I did not have mentors and, um, I've been working with some uh, mentors lately though. Um, you know, one guy, um, was even older than me. His, um, he was one of the first employees at Intel and he worked as mm. mentor to Steve Jobs. And wow. so, you know, he's a, um, he, he provided me some insights, but at the end of the day, uh, for me, um, it, it need to come from within, you know, I, sometimes I, 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 it's good to talk to somebody, um, or the way I solve problems, I would say is to talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. And, um, and often that somebody is my wife, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because, you know, she has, she has, she's not a business person, but she's got common sense. And, right. and we need Voltaire that. Yeah. said, you know, uh, <laughs> Voltaire said this a long time ago, he said, common sense is not so common. Right. That's so, very true. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think uh, no, I, I I can't say that I've you know uh, built you know helped build multi billion multi million dollar companies or anything like that. I'm this. I have an agency. We're doing pretty good, uh, mm -hmm. and I've had uh, businesses over the decades, uh, various kinds. And uh, but I I feel like I'm just I kind of learn in the same way just by doing, uh, just yeah. by diving into things, being over my head. <laughs> yep, and uh, trying to do some either googling or reading books or sometimes talking to the wife, but uh, yeah. she's she's pretty grounded. I'm, you know, she yeah. keeps me grounded. Um, yeah. some, but I, but sometimes my dog. The, the, yeah, <laughs> diving in deep. Um, uh, I mean, having the guts to take that jump, I think, is really really important. Yeah, and and. Um, and, and specifically when it comes to, to pricing, there's a lot of people who, you know, they, they try to lean on others as opposed to, um, sort of do their own journey. So, you know, and, and, and if we talk about pricing specifically, the, one of the most common mistakes people do is to try to price the same way as a competitor prices. Mm. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, um, and, and first of all, that's very hard to do, even if, because even if your competitor have prices on their website, you don't know, uh, what special deals they're making. Right. You right. don't know if they change prices eight times a day. You don't know if it's geotagged. So if, if you're somewhere else, uh, you're going to see different prices. You don't know if you, you know, go back to the website the second time within a certain period, you'll see different prices. So, um, so that's not a very good, um, uh, information piece. And, and, 
if you're not, um, if your competitors don't have prices on the website, what well, I mean, how are you going to get their prices? You you can't. And and uh, I sort of <laughs> I find it so funny. Um, some people I speak to, you know, they 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 say we we price to the market. Well, how do they know what the market is paying? Right? They don't. You know, it's just guesswork. Unless you're selling oil or grains or pork bellies or something like that, you know. Yeah. But um, but and pricing pricing to to competition like that is often the the first step uh, into the commoditization death spiral, right? Because then you start using the same features and functions and messages and all that as your competitor, and then suddenly you're a commodity, and and in a commodity business, lowest price win. You know? Right. 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 Yeah, it, it's uh, well in the beginning when you're first starting a business. Um, I think you have to you, I, you know. I'm sure I did uh, look to the market and just or look around me online. You know, what do other people price things as, or try to do some research around that. Mm -hmm. um, but I really, in my business, so that, you know, we we kind of price things and we have different kinds of contracts. We you know hourly to you know project based you know, um, or, you know, monthly contracts and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But it was always, um, a best guess. And then, uh, <laughs> and, and seeing how it goes. Yeah. Um, I, you know, we talk, I love that we were talking about experiments. I love that you use that word in there somewhere, uh, mm -hmm. because you're always doing experiments. And yes. when I first started this agency four years ago, um, uh, going into our fifth year, um, you know, I started, the experiment was low. Well, it was mm -hmm. high based on what I thought. I'm like, I'm going, I'm not going to have, um, I'm not going to, you know, go, I don't want to go after the $300 website or the, you know, do work for $10 an hour, but I'm going to really bump it up, you know, like yeah. 40 an hour and, you know, 5,000 a website, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, and then I, as I did it, now as I got business, it was too easy. I was like, wait, I'm getting this. Maybe I'm too low now. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'm still too low. And I kept bumping it up over to let, you know, over the years and, and uh, to where I am now. But, uh, but it was always kind of uh, just throwing it out there, seeing what came back. And, and till you get to, uh, to me, it was always about a feeling is, is okay. Now I feel like I'm in a good place. I know there's agencies that, you know, it just, to use hourly as an example, I don't like hourly that much, but <laughs> but you know that I know I'll charge 160 bucks or more an hour uh, to do web development. You know, yeah. we come in below that, but what does that mean? Because they they got a different. They might have been in business for a couple of decades, and this is where they are. And you know, I'm not. Yeah. You know, it's a different you know, type there, of there, market. Yeah, you know. there there is a. Um, there, there's something called expectation bias. Um, and expectation bias, this is not something that I have invented. The, the expectation bias is, is, is something that, um, the folks, um, that, that gotten, uh, Nobel prizes for, for their work in behavioral economics defined. And, um, the price, uh, sets an expectation of, of the value you deliver to your clients. Mm. And, and what that means that if, if you're pricing too low, um, potential clients will say that, uh, this, this is, this probably is not going to be good enough. Right. And, and so they won't buy. And, and the, the interesting thing with expectation bias is that it, it also affects customer satisfaction. So yeah. you, you, you pay something that you think is relatively high. Uh, you are then vested into making the best out of whatever you bought. And, and because of that, um, you, you are more, you become a more satisfied customer. I mean, and this is just how we work as humans. This is, um, and, and it, and it, I mean, as an example, this is of course a very simple example, but, um, it's been found that, that, uh, that, that a five cent aspirin is not very good in curing your, your headache, whereas that, same aspirin for 50 cents is much more effect effective, right? And, um, like uh, a placebo um, effect or something. <laughs> yeah, it, it yeah. is the placebo effect in, in yeah. a way. 
Um, I'm a little bit part of the, the, the audiophile community and, and, uh, you know, there, there are not cases out there that, um, you know, they, they buy an audiophile USB cable for five grand, right? And, um, and because they, I mean, we know that, uh, I guess the audience know is that a cable, a digital cable is a cable, you know, mm -hmm. um, whatever the data, it's either go through or it doesn't go through. There's sort of no middle, <laughs> middle ground, you know, right. and, and these guys, they, they, they buy one of these USB cables, uh, for, for an enormous amount of money and they can clearly hear a difference. Whereas technically there's no way there can be a difference, but, um, but because they, they spent all that money, they expect a difference. So they hear a difference, you know? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it's so much, no, I, it, it's the same way with, uh, you know, pricing in general, even the numbers you use in your pricing is obviously there's a psychological component to them. Yes. I, re I remember when I first started out like 20 years ago, um, we were, I was selling a lot of digital products back then, like eBooks and whatever mm -hmm. scripts, software, this and that, and the other thing, memberships. Um, and I remember there was always this thing, I, and I don't even know if this holds true anymore. Um, but we would have these. Number one, you always use the 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 number seven. Yeah. For some reason, the number seven, like seventeen dollars or twenty seven dollars or forty seven dollars or ninety seven dollars, it was always that seven. And it wasn't nine ninety nine or anything like that. Some people recommend that, um, but it was that number seven for some reason. And so I always, and I, I don't know if I ever did any split testing back there to test nine instead or versus seven, but it was something that was being taught back then. And then it was always the, also just the, uh, there was certain increments, like someone, mm -hmm. someone would, you'd get more sales or make more money at 47 price point versus 17, for example. Yeah. Um, and that always fascinated me, and it's it's uh, probably true in in other businesses as well. Um, yeah, the um, the uh, you know we we all, we all been exposed to this pricing on the nine, you know, nine ninety nine, right. ninety nine ninety nine, nine hundred ninety nine ninety nine, and so forth. You know, um, and first of all, um, th there isn't actually any if we take. The, if we take 17 versus 19, there's no difference in sales volume. Um, the, um, the only difference is that you're leaving $2 on the table when you do 17. Mm. Um, mm. there is a difference between, um, uh, 99, ending on 99 and ending on 97 or ending on 1995. And ending on 97 actually do give you about a 3% higher sales volume than ending on 99. Wow, um, really? Yes. And, and, um, and this has been, uh, proven in, in various, um, uh, empirical, uh, research projects. Um, but, um, the reason that, that you want to do this is that, um, there's something out there called price walls. And price walls are psychological price points where small price changes uh, generates um, very significant change in, in sales volume. Now, um, we can, with some precision, say where those price walls are. And, and it's those even numbers, you know, $10, $20, $50, $100, dollars and so forth. But we cannot say without doing the kind of, of, of willingness to pay research, uh, that my company does is, is, is to say how severe they are. Sometimes I've seen, I've seen occasions where should you cross one of these price rules, uh, some companies can lose 50% of their business, you know, mm. going from 49, 97 to 50, right? Um, and, and in, in some cases, um, that price wall, again, using the same price numbers here, uh, th there's a tiny wall at, at 50, and then there's a huge wall at, at, um, at a hundred. So you, you, you know, you, you may trade off, um, you may trade off, um, of, of trade off revenue against, uh, against sales volume. And, and let me just give you a little example of that. A couple of months ago, I, I got a, a unsolicited email from, from a prior client and, 
um, it it was just a screenshot from his from his accounting system with a very short message, and I can see from the screenshot that his sales volume was down a little bit, like five eight percent, something like that. But I could also see that he his margin was up with forty nine percent, and um and and his message was very short. He said, "Less work, more money, many thanks." You know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So, 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 and, and yeah. once you, once you have that hard data on, 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 on how sales volume and revenue is, is, is affected by, by your price, then, mm -hmm. then, then you can price accordingly, you know? Yes. It's, um, it's, yeah, that's doing, doing less and making more is always a beautiful thing. Um, well, we, we it, told you mentioned coyotes here, uh, yeah. you know, in the beginning, because we pre show we talked about it. Um, and I don't know with coyotes, but I do know that, um, like cheetahs on the, um, on the African savanna, um, they obviously need to kill to eat, you know, hmm. and uh, their success rate is about 25%. So, um, Means that they, they, they hunt and, and, and are not successful 75% of, of the time. And when you look at that from, from, from a company revenue point of view and, 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 um, and, and profit point of view, um, maybe that's where you want to be. You know, you, you, you want to, you want to have a small number of highly profitable com uh, customers as opposed to a large number of not so profitable com uh, customers. And, and the reason that you may want to have that is, is, um, with, with higher profits, you can simply serve your customers better, right? You will have more resource, not only to serve existing customer better, but you will also have more resource to market yourself and more research to, um, to develop new products or services, um, even hire the best people, right? Yeah. That's a great and, analogy. And, that the cheetahs, yeah. I like yeah. That. <laughs> but yeah, so, no, I, um, you know, it's it's funny, you know, coming from the digital world, uh, you know, volume. It's like you can serve as many people. You, you can sell a thousand or something, and, or a hundred or something, and it's the same amount of work because it's all digitally delivered. You know. Yeah. But from a services perspective, though, when I look at, like. Um, my agency and, and my, what my vision has been since day one is to remain a boutique agency that serves a smaller number of clients, but obviously at a higher price point, but it allows me to find the, because I'm starting high, I'm finding the higher quality, the, you know, uh, the, the larger monthly contracts or, you know, uh, contracts in general. Um, yeah. but it allows me the room to build a team that can serve those people better mm -hmm. and uh, provide a much higher level of service to a, to a smaller uh, group of people rather than mm -hmm. having, you know, maybe having a couple dozen clients instead of having hundreds of clients yeah. that you're constantly running around with your like chicken with your head cut off, trying, trying to, trying to serve everybody and put out all the flames everywhere. Uh, but you can, mm -hmm. you can, you can do much, a much higher value, uh, uh, set up and service for those for those folks, and and that's made, yeah. a, made a big difference so far for us. So, what yeah, uh, what you what you're talking about also is that uh, your price selects your customers. Yes, and and um, if um, let me again, let me give you an example. This is a, a prior client who they have a SaaS solution, and um, we found through the research we did that that they were. They were so underpriced that they could quadruple their prices, right? And which they consequently did. And um, not overnight, but uh, they inched them up over a, about a nine month period, I believe. Mm -hmm. And when I then followed up with the CEO, um, he said, um, two things happened, he said, uh, as a result of, of, um, of quadrupling prices. First of all, our sales volume went up 25%. And, and then he said, and then we got a different set of customers and using the terminology he used, he said, and we got rid of the bottom feeders. Yeah. Right? And, and 
now we have a more professional level of customers and because of that our customer support costs have gone down with 80 percent right and and price sensitive customers um they buy from you only because of low price yeah and um because they buy from you only because of low price they rarely learn how to use the product or service uh, that you that you offer which is why they clog up the um the customer support line they're not um, incentivized to really try on their own and so forth you know and and further on um as as so, so you're going to spend a lot of time um working with these price sensitive customers trying to keep them happy and then as 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 soon as there is a cheaper alternative they're gone you yeah. know they they're not going to yeah. be they're not going to be that ever returning loyal customers that you can serve very well because you have the resource to do so they they will be gone in the flash so yeah it's um I just had a hard conversation with one of our partners <laughs> about this. I said, we're not a, I, I said it in these words kind of work. I said, unfortunately, we're not a, s a source for cheap labor. I said, so yeah. the stuff we do do for you uh, is going to have to be higher value. And, uh, and, it, and it works like, like we do, like I have a number of, uh, one of our things or verticals is to help digital marketing agencies and stuff. Um, and, I know that they're using other people because they're getting cheaper labor with those people. But I also mm -hmm. hear, wish you could do this <laughs> because mm -hmm. you're going to do a better job. Um, yeah, but it's, it was one of the things you said, um, and I, they, I think that I, I kind of, when we started this conversation, I wanted to kind of hopefully land here eventually at some point, um, is, is that incremental move, um, like I talked about earlier, how I started to kind of incrementally increase. Mm -hmm. And you talked about somebody that they tripled or whatever over nine months. Yeah. Um, that it's something that you maybe you don't turn on the, you know, just turn it over and you're three times that the next day and hope for the best. I mean, it's something that, I, can you speak to that a little bit, how you would, how, what well, the strategy would be going, trying to increase your price? Um, do you experiment it? Do you split test? No, what do you, you do? <laughs> you don't want to, um, especially if you have returning customers, you don't want to, mm -hmm. um, you don't want to just, um, th there is a process and I've, I've written a guide it's called seven easy steps to, um, increase your prices and keep your customers happy. And, um, and that's available on, on, on our website. And you can also buy it from Amazon if you're interested. Mm -hmm. But, um, but the, the, it's all about communication. Um, and it's communication internally and it's communication externally. Because, um, imagine that you come to your salespeople and, and, uh, and, and you say, um, you know, next week we're going to increase our prices with 50%. You know, they're going to do backflips. And, um, so, so they need to be trained on how to defend higher prices. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, again, let me give you another example, uh, another SaaS company in the oil and gas industry. Um, we said that they could increase prices with, um, um, with about 41% overall, different bundles had different price increases, but on the average, uh, they had 17,000 customers. And, um, we went through the, with, with a training program for that company. And so all the customer facing people, which was sales and, and customer support, um, learned how to, um, inc you know, defend their, their new pricing. And we also worked with them to make sure that they, they did the right kind of messaging and so forth. So you message correctly to, to your customer base. And out of those 17,000 customers, uh, the CEO got, one phone call and two angry email and they didn't lose a single customer. Right. Nice. And, yeah. and, um, and I, <laughs> I actually, um, I had a call with a, the CEO of, of, of a, of a company here that, that where we did the, the, the same, this was, they implemented similar price increases, um, also, um, uh, between, between, 25 and, and 50% for, for different kinds of bundles for their, their products. 
Um, they did the implementation about two and a half, maybe three weeks ago, and I just spoke to them this morning. Um, and, and the CEO said that, um, well, we, we, we got a couple of people that complained, but they, they bought anyway, right? <laughs> so, so also they didn't lose any customers. Right. Know? So, um, Interesting. but, but again, yeah. they, it's all about being, being prepared to, um, to defend uh, it, yeah. To, to defend yeah. it in, and, yeah. and we, what we haven't talked about, which is really key. I touched about it that, um, that you want to avoid that commoditization, um, death spiral, right? Because that eventually leaves your company on, on, on life support or even dead if you're really bad. Um, but to avoid this is, is all about find, you know, being, differentiate, um, your service or your product in such a way that is meaningful to your, your buyers and, and especially meaningful in ways that, uh, that allows you to, to sell at higher prices than, than competition, higher, more profitable prices than competition. Um, and, and, uh, finding those points of differentiation is really, really key, right? And, and, um, because when you do, you gain something called pricing power and, and, and pricing power was, is a term that was, um, coined by Warren Buffett. And, and he said that for him, uh, the most important criteria for, for where he invests his money is whether a company has pricing power or not. And, and then he continued to, um, uh, to say that, um, uh, and pricing power is the ability to, to um, increase prices and loss, not lose sales volume, and and in the two examples I just mentioned, that's exactly what happened. Yeah, because they had dif differentiated themselves. And, because yeah, they were differentiated. Yeah. No, not not. I mean, <laughs> it needs to be differentiated in in meaningful ways. You know, not differentiated in in any which way. It has to. You have to understand. Um, you know, really from from. Um, from 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 your market, uh, what what drives a higher willingness to pay than than uh, right than than others, you know. Interesting. Yeah, that's a whole topic in and of itself. That's yes, know, it how, is. To, how to set yourself <laughs> apart and and uh, you know what your story is and what you you know all that stuff and how you build that around your brand. Uh, yep. That that is important. Um, yeah. So uh, one of the things. Um, that uh, you also talk about here probably and, and where we've had discussion about before this, maybe in your books, whatever, um, mm -hmm. is uh, is how to determine, because you, you've kind of touched on this, I think, like you have to be able to, it's not just guessing on price, like you're using, a, you said you were using a formula or something. Can you give us some hints as to what, uh, what you look at when you're, or what, tools you use or insights you try to gain from what sources to figure out what, what pricing should be or where you should, well, what your target should I, be? I, I used the formula before I got into pricing. And now, of course, I know that that formula was completely wrong. Right. Mm. And, um, and the, the, um, um, the, the process that I developed when I started my own company here is to do willingness to pay research. And, and this is a way of doing, online polling of a company's marketplace and from that and from a series of questions in the poll understand um how potential clients to 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 our or potential customers to our clients how they how they equate value with with price mm. and um and 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 you know then then we also developed our own AI based software that, that crunches the data and, and create predictions of sales volume and revenue at different prices. Um, and, um, but if you, you know, obviously we charge for our services. Um, but like this, I mentioned, uh, this, this other company, um, who, um, uh, the second company who didn't lose any customers, you know, they, they, they're a small company, um, three million bucks. Right. Yeah. Um, they got our fees back in two and a half weeks, right? So, um, the, the, um, which is kind of typical, 
right? So uh, that, that's what you would well, hope. That would yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's that's the key. <laughs> well, you're, we, they're investing in you, and hopefully that'll re- better be a good return on investment. So we, um, we're on we're on project seven hundred thirty nine, and yeah. so far, um, out of out of those projects, um, um, I have two customers who are not willing to be references. Hmm. So. But the 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 um, if if you're a startup or you're a very small company, um, there is a way where you can actually figure out what uh, what um, what your price range should be, right? And and the way you do this is that you 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 go and identify twenty five potential customers. Now these are not your current customers. They are not your current prospects. They are not friends and family. Absolutely not, right? And mm-hmm. um, but you identify 20, at least twenty-five of these potential customers. If you can't identify twenty-five potential customers, you have bigger problems than pricing, right? Mm, yeah. Um, and um, and then you 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 describe your product or your service. You describe the benefits and so forth, and and then you ask them two questions, right? And you say, now when you understand what we do and, and how we deliver value to you, what, what is a price that is so low that you think we are over promising and going to under deliver? And because of that, you will not buy, right? And then you, and then you continue to say, and then let's look at the flip side that we are going to over deliver. And, and under promise. Um, what is a price that is just a little bit too high for you? So you still won't buy, right? So then you take the average of those two 25. Well, there are 50 questions, but 25 interviews. And, and, um, so you then, and then what you get is a low point and a high point. And now you know where your, your, um, your, the range of your prices, right? Should not be below this, and should not be be above that, and and obviously you want to put your price towards the high end, yeah. right? Um, because that's going to lead you to to the higher revenue, and and if you can continue this and talk to a hundred people, which you may may be able to do over some period of time, um, and and if you also keep track of of the profile of those people. Um, when you have a hundred, maybe you then start to see that, um, you know, this particular profile, uh, will have a higher range than another profile. And then suddenly you can start targeting your, your marketing and your sales towards that profile with that has a higher range, right? Interesting. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, this is, this is the enormously simplification of the the work we do in my company. <laughs> yeah, you know. Well, that's the thing. But, I mean, you're, obviously, this is that's why people hire you to do services. They don't want to do it yeah. themselves, or they want you to do you know digging even deeper uh, with yeah. your AI and all that good stuff you got yeah, going exactly, on over there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, how do you get? So, so the thing that j- jumps in my head for whatever reason is how do you get these people in? The, what's the incentives for somebody to to share that information? Uh, do you in in our? Am I going to give them a free website? <laughs> for no. a free website, can you give do this poll for me? Can you get jump on a fifteen minute call? <laughs> well, um, if you, if you do the kind of work we do in my company, um, I said we do online polling, and and mm. there's um, there's um, there's something called panel companies, and and we have access in the U.S. to twenty eight million people. Uh, globally, we have access to 75 million people who uh, say they're willing to take a, a, an online poll, an online oh. questionnaire, right? Interesting. Okay. Um, if, but if, 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 again, if you're a startup um, uh, and you need to find those 25 people, you, I guess you, you, you need to, you need, you need to know the, the profile of your buyers and maybe start cold calling or, yeah. Maybe if you're selling a consumer go- consumer goods of some kind, you 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 go down to your 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 local Starbucks and say, "Can I ask you a couple of questions?" Right? Well, I like you know? well, one of the things that because I did advertising back in the day, I could see doing mm-hmm. like a campaign just to because it's a valuable 
uh, it's valuable insight. Just you mm -hmm. know, have like some kind of video or some kind of training, free training or something for them, whatever you would in your business that yeah, would make or, sense. Or and then to get access to it, just answer these couple questions for me, and then boom, you can have the free training or something like or, that. Or yeah, or or you in in this case with panel companies, they are paid with cash, right? Hmm. And and um, if you if you do this in in um, you know the you know going out there personally asking people um send them a you know a five dollar gift card you know yeah, yeah. you know or or because um, it's valuable i mean for you i mean it'd be worth the investment to obviously. yeah and, and something that doesn't work is 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 saying and you'll be entered into a draw of 50 bucks <laughs> <laughs> nobody cares about that because they know nobody yeah. will win. You know what are the odds? Yeah. Cash, a, a lower cash that is guaranteed than a higher sort of win is is yeah. is much more effective. You know, and like I said, if you if if what you're selling happened to be a consumer, consumer product, you know, and 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 you find your consumers in, at at your local Starbucks, you know, hand them out five dollar. Starbucks gift cards so they can use that next time they they go there to to get their latte you know that's brilliant yeah, yeah. I like that well do you have anything else uh, anything else if you were talking to a small business you know one or two final tips or uh, that, that can uh, regarding pricing and how they could maybe common maybe something tied to a common mistake uh, somebody yeah um, they, they, don't be afraid of increasing prices right um, the worst thing that can happen if you increase prices is that, um, is that your, your current customers rebels and then you put them back to where they were, right? Uh, and chances are that you, you, you wouldn't see much difference. Um, I mean, depending on where you are, if you have very low prices, maybe you see a, an increase in sales volume, right? Um, an increase in, in, in customer satisfaction as well. Um, and, um, if, if you're hell bent on, on increasing prices and you, and you get people who are, um, rebellious, you, you grandfather them in for, for six months, you know, and then mm -hmm. you say, and, but, 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 but again, it's, it's all, it's all in, in detail explained in that guide I mentioned, yeah. the, uh, seven easy steps to, to increase prices and keep your customers happy. Yeah. You know? So it's all, just... all about, all about, Really, all about messaging and process. Yeah, I like, I like just to to speak to you for like one minute here to what you said there. I actually have something. Uh, I, had a, I have a client that runs a rather large e-commerce store, uh, sales wise, you know, um, and uh, so every move they make has to be really careful and even removing something from their top menu we were talking to them the other day it's like you know that's kind of redundant no don't touch that <laughs> <laughs> um but uh but they did a test earlier this year to increase their prices mm -hmm. and i'm always very careful because i'm the web developer i'm very careful okay if something happens, we have to revert this. Make let's make that path easy, and yeah. sure enough, I, mean, I think they let it run maybe uh, less than a week. I think, mm -hmm. and I got the email that <laughs> Matt, our sales are down. We need to revert. <laughs> so it yeah, definitely but, it definitely happens. Um, well, it it yeah. does happen, but but what it what it really means is that, um, and I know we're kind of running out of time here, but. That's okay. We um, the, the, it could well be that other messages, other positioning statements, other value messages, um, other ways in how you present your product on, on the, um, on the website, uh, different customer targeting would, um, would support higher prices without a loss of sales volume. Right. Yeah. And, well, and that's this what, is, that's why, like in this case, they don't, there's no the messaging didn't change. Nothing changed. They were just yeah, testing this, a new this, pri price point. This and yeah. that may have been a mistake, right? Mm -hmm. And and um, and that's actually something that that I've, I've seen. You know, and I've spoken to to um, you know multiple people who who have had the same experience. Um, again, um, we're talking another consumer goods company. Uh, that um, that uh, that we worked with earlier this year, and um, 
they said that a couple of years ago they they tried increasing pricing and and it 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 just didn't work and and what we found in our research was that uh, even how they positioned themselves even the name of the company was already on the edge of what you could charge mm. but we also found that um should they position themselves differently should they actually change their brand name it will it, it would easily support 25 30% higher prices right so unless you know that that relationship between how you marketing messages how you marketing channels how you marketing um positioning statements and your sales methodologies and sales channels and so forth how all of that affects um what clients are willing to pay um just increasing prices like that is a is a shot in the dark yeah right yeah so, uh, we keep talking forever here but i <laughs> we just had a uh He's been on twice now, Bob Hunter. He's got two, uh, he was a guest the last episode, um, but he's got two companies and mm -hmm. two different brands to serve two different types of people. Like one's very right. higher end, like big corporations, stuff like that. But they wanted to go after small businesses and, and also serve them. So they created a whole new brand and website and to target that. So brand does play a lot into it and how you position yourself. And oh, for absolutely. sure. Yeah. I mean, that's why you have, I mean, I mentioned Starbucks, you know, um, you have Seattle's best. It's the same coffee and it's lower priced, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and, um, and, and, and so you have, uh, one brand for profits and one brand for volume. Yeah. Same product. Yeah. yeah. Very good stuff. So let's, let's end here where, where can they find you on the web? Where can the builders crew find you on the web? Um, you mentioned uh, they could uh, get a free guide with some tips yes. and stuff. Uh, where do they find that? Well, there. Just Google the price whisper. That's really the easiest way. I like um, that. And um, you can also go to um, uh, the price whisper dot me, and that leads to the website. And um, and there's a whole slew of guys. There's this price increase guide. There is how you gain pricing power, how you present pricing power, how do you present prices to minimize sales friction and, and all different things. And, and, um, like I mentioned, I have a best selling book on, on Amazon called also oddly enough, the price whisper. Um, and, um, and, um, um, it's only available at Kindle for the moment. The, the printers are very, very slow to get the print version out. Um, uh, it's going to, once it's done though, it's going to be, uh, in, in all bookstores in America. So, um, nice. Congratulations. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah, um, I, I know I'm going to be diving into the stuff. I mean, the pricing is hugely important for me and I, Oh, I, it is. And it somebody is, yeah. with your experience and knowledge, I want to learn from you. So, uh, <laughs> are, you. are you, are you on any of the, uh, social, social media? Platforms, only LinkedIn, only LinkedIn. Just no, LinkedIn. Only LinkedIn. Okay. Um, the um, um, I, I I do have a, a, a YouTube channel, but to be honest, it's mostly there for for SEO purposes. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. But there's there's um, I have maybe thirty or forty videos. You know, where okay. I talk about different aspects of pricing. Nice. So go check that out too. Crew. Yeah. All right. Thanks for coming on. Great Thank you so much for having me, and 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 I hope the audience found this um, this of interest. I think they have. All right, till next time. Bye bye. That's all for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed that. Again, please subscribe if you haven't already, and give us a thumbs up if we deserve it. If you want to comment on this episode's page, provide me with requests on topics for future episodes, or inquire about being a guest, please find your way to thebuilders.fm. You can contact me there or add a comment under these show notes. Now a word from our sponsor, my agency, Unified Web Design. We build custom websites, features, we maintain websites, we work with agencies to fulfill their web design and development needs, and more. If you are interested in our services or are looking for an agency to work with as a partner to build awesome sites for your clients, feel free to reach out to me at unifiedwebdesign.com. There's a handy contact me link at the top, fill out that form and it will open a ticket and that ticket will find its way to me. Thanks for joining me today. 
We'll see you next time.